We're talking triple jump in this video. I'm going to look at some factors which can improve performance and hopefully you'll be able to employ them into your training as well. I'm going to talk about double arm action versus single arm action, phase ratio and various other components of the triple jump. I'm often asked about the merits of the single versus the double arm triple jump actions. Now, Generally speaking, most male jumpers use a variant of the double arm action. The more you look at it, though, the more you'll see different types of double arm, particularly off of the hop. You can shovel through very quickly. You can lift the arms post, leaving the takeoff, and then bring the arms back. However, one key aspect is the fact that the movement needs to be quick and timed with the leg movement. With the single arm action, you've got arm over the top at hop. You've also got a butterfly style of movement as well and then thereafter you tend to go arm swings and then various ways to take the arms up into the jumps phase. Well there's quite a lot of research which indicates that the double arm method is better than the single arm method. Some research which I'll put on the screen now indicates that it enables greater transference of power leverage between the phases Secondly, that it improves the balance. Doing that as opposed to that can create a more symmetrical movement and thus allow force to be transferred directly down the run-up accordingly. Further reason is that the double arm action can raise the centre of mass at contact as well. So all those benefits are potential reasons for doing the double arm action. However, having said that, why don't women? What research I could find indicates that due to the lower power levels of most women compared to men, they're less able to transfer between contacts as effectively, and thus they can generate more momentum, keep more speed going through the phases with a single arm as opposed to a double arm action. It's also quite interesting to note that many women are more balanced in terms of how they go through their phases compared to men. You can have a balanced technique, a hop dominant technique, or a jump dominant technique. And basically, if one of your phases is 2% or more longer than the next longest, then you're deemed to be dominant in that phase. So you could be hop dominant or jump dominant. However, if all your phases are within 2% of each other, then you're a balanced jumper. Now, there's been quite a lot of sports science which looks at optimum phase ratios, i.e. which one of those is better than the other. And the majority of computer simulations indicate that it's the hop dominant method that will produce the longest jumps. However, in reality, many of the world's best jumpers have produced their best jumps with a jump dominant model. What these modeling methods lack is the adrenaline, the physiological capability, the strengths, the power, the speed that's specific to each particular jumper and indeed the conditions on a particular day. From some of the research which I have, Christian Taylor is one of the few triple jumpers that accelerates all the way to takeoff. There's no slowing down on the penultimate going into the hop phase. So, potentially that has explained why in the past his jumps have been jump dominant as he has been able to maintain more speed through the phases compared to his contemporaries. The way the hop is also set up is another reason why a jumper may be hop or jump dominant. Pichardo, for example, and Evora both set a lot more akin to a long jumper as they come to hop from the board. That is going to lower their centre of mass and therefore when they take off it's going to project their hips up at a higher angle. That means that they're going to have more air time and they're going to hop longer. Higher hop means that there's going to be greater landing forces that need to be overcome and returned into the step. Now somebody like Pichardo literally just bounces and continues to go forwards and this is where computer simulations can fall short as how can they take into account the elasticity, the eccentric concentric capabilities of a jumper. The computer model will put into its sums velocity, horizontal velocity, vertical velocity and alter the ratios between the phases to simulate which 
phase ratio is going to produce the greatest results. It's down to you and your coach to work out what works best for you. Now, a double arm action could be one of the main things to go for to actually attempt to implement as that does seem to offer more benefits than the single arm action, whether you're male or female or particularly for females. However, in terms of phase ratio, that's going to boil down very much to your physiology and speed as a jumper and how you set the hop up. If you choose to set it up more and go more vertical off of the hop, then you're going to be hop dominant. If, however, you want to run through the takeoff more, carry more speed, then inevitably you're going to be jump dominant. One of the key things that I've found is being able to return force from the contacts and strength becomes crucial, or I should say power becomes crucial. You need a great technical model. You need to understand the biomechanics that you put into your technical model, but without the necessary strength and power and speed, then it's not gonna work out. So the more I see it, as I've said, with my triple jumpers, it's about increasing their strength and power levels, perhaps even more so than the long jump. If you're not able to get out of three hops and a jump, for example, with a 10 to 12 step run on relatively easily and it's hard work, then you don't have sufficient power. In another video, I'm gonna look specifically at the role of specific triple jump power development and how we can get that to really improve our triple jumping. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video, or indeed any others, then do leave them in the comment section below or through my other social media. And of course, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll know when I upload new content. And do feel free to share this video with your fellow coaches and athletes. And good luck with your training and any competitions that you've got coming up. If you'd like to help me help you become a better athlete or coach, then do consider becoming a channel member. For as little as £1.99 a month, $1.99 a month, you can become a channel supporter and do just that. So head over to the channel's homepage, click on the membership button and see what offers are available. If you're interested in finding out more about the free lap timing system, which is accurate to one thousandth of a second, then again, get in contact at the email address below. If you like the Jumps Squad merchandise that I often wear in these videos, then do check out the Spring Store. You'll see the products available underneath this video, for example. And I've launched a new backpack rucksack with the Jump Squad logo on it. So do check that out.